Because I have a son attending a high school in Richmond Hill, I received an email from the York Region District School Board the other day promoting an upcoming seminar entitled Say No to Hate, How Extremists Target Our Schools and What to Do About It. Well, that piqued my interest, so I decided to open the attachment to learn a little about these extremists on campus. And I found it most curious that the entire focus of the extremism to be discussed is right-wing white supremacy. Now, don't get me wrong, folks. I have precious little time for white supremacists and their hateful rhetoric. Indeed, for what it's worth, my dearly departed grandfather spent five years of his life fighting the Nazis in the Second World War. But to think that white supremacy is the only form of extremism in the world today is downright delusional. Indeed, when it comes to the extremism file, where does the York Region District School Board stand on, oh, I don't know, the type of extremism that is committed in the name of Allah as opposed to Adolf? So I sent off an email to Corey McBain, who is the chair at the YRDSB. Here it is verbatim. Dear Ms. McBain, hope you are doing well. My name is David Menzies, and I am the father of a student currently enrolled at Richmond Hill High School. Recently, I received an email from the YRDSB about an event scheduled for next month called Say No to Hate, How Extremists Target Our Schools and What to Do About It. Certainly, given the times in which we live, this would be an appropriate seminar indeed. However, when I further read the document, I was curious to discover that the topic to be discussed is the dangers posed by right-wing extremism in our community. As well, the three people that will be giving presentations apparently specialize in the dangers posed by white supremacist groups. Certainly, no reasonable per person would want right-wing extremism and or white supremacist rhetoric in his or her community, but to think that this is the only kind of extremism out there is naive at best and downright dangerous at worst. For example, I am most curious why the topic of Islamic extremism is apparently not up for discussion. Going by the numbers, terrorist attacks carried out by Islamists account for the biggest amount of carnage in the world today, including terrorist attacks here in Canada. According to one source, there has been precisely 34,779 deadly attacks by Islamists since 9-11 alone. My question is this, why is the YRDSB ignoring the proverbial elephant in the room when it comes to targeting hate and extremism? My thanks in advance and I look forward to your response, David Menzies. Now to Ms. McBain's credit, she personally called me within minutes of receiving my email. But our conversation left me somewhat perplexed. For starters, she seemed to think that the problem in York Region is Islamophobia although she had no hard numbers. So we're, not, so we're not ignoring any, but I would say in our region right now, our problem is not Islamic, our, our problem is actually Islamophobia. Uh, oh, how do you quantify that? Um, because the, um, so we'll, we'll see things happening on school properties and, and York Region Police as well. Will um, so anti-black anti and anti-Semitism for sure has been on the rise in the last few years, um, and we are we also see um, Islamophobia happening as well. Okay. Um, and so it could be it could be things like maybe we're seeing graffiti on our school properties. Um, you know, it, it, it's incidences that are happening on our properties, but it it does go beyond our property because York Region Police has data to support. Um, um, the, the actions against certain groups. Well, that's interesting because, I, I, um, again, I, I'd, I'd really be interested if you could quantify that because my understanding is that traditionally, and it's been ramping up, is that the, the, the biggest uh, component of hate crime, if you will, is uh, anti-Semitism. Uh, and it, it, yes, it has. It ha and, and Bernie Farber is one of the folks that are speaking at that event on the, is it the 8th or the 9th, the one that you're referencing? Oh, I get it. So since Bernie Farber is a Jew, that covers off the anti-Semitism angle as perpetrated by Islamists? <laughs> well, nice try. 
Farber has a long history of turning a blind eye to Islamic extremism. Frankly, I don't even think Farber is capable of uttering those two words in one sentence. In fact, last year, he actually came to the defense of the family who perpetrated the Toronto hijab hoax. Check out this astonishing column in Now Magazine in which Farber uses quotation marks around the word hoax as if to suggest that the jury is still out as to whether the story of an Asian man shredding a young girl's hijab is a hoax or not, even though the family confessed it was all made up. Suffice to say, it is highly improbable that any of the speakers at the Say No to Hate seminar is going to utter anything pertaining to radical Islam. Also, I should note here that according to B'nai B'rith's annual audit of anti-Semitic incidents in 2017, it is noted that, quote, 2017 was the second straight record-breaking year for anti-Semitism in Canada. This year's 1,752 recorded incidents is a 1.4% increase over last year's record high of 1,728 incidents, end quote. Coincidentally, in the photo gallery, there is a selection of anti-Semitic graffiti, including a swastika on the wall of a Woodbridge High School, which is in York Region, and a Hitler was right slogan spray painted on a concrete barrier near Vaughn Mills Mall, also in York Region. Of course, it gets trickier when pinpointing who the culprits are when it comes to such vulgar graffiti. But I ponder, forget about the Middle East. These days, there are no go zones for Jews in certain parts of Europe. Yes, Europe. Yet, are these no go zones due to white supremacists? Or is it thanks to another group of ne'er do wells? Suffice to say, I suggested to McBain that when it comes to extremism, simply going by the numbers isn't the biggest problem. Islamic extremism. Look, I take no relish in reporting this. It's just the fact of the matter. In my original letter to her, I referenced 34,779 deadly attacks in the name of Allah since 9-11 alone, according to the religion of peace.com. Oh, and that number is already out of date, folks. At time of writing, it now stands at 34,815. But McBain seemed less concerned with statistics and more keen on reacting to anecdotal information. I know that the folks at our board, like I said, I was not part of the planning. Um, so my answer still would apply is that this is a starting point. It's not meant to say this is all that we're seeing right now in terms of extremism. It's just this is a starting point for discussion. Oh, okay. And so when would when would the uh, presentation about Islamic extremism, when would so that... One, 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 I'm not going to say that there is one I'll, because I don't oh. coordinate this. And two, if we're going to be having it, there would be data that would be relevant to our board, not to global. Like we're going to look at the, the issues within our space that we need to be focused on. So I, and I don't know. I don't have the answer to what that is. I know anti-Semitism and anti-Black, for sure, um, in York Region are, are of concern. I, I still see Islamophobia as, as well as, as a, uh, an issue within the system. Why don't I connect you with Cecil Roach, who his staff would have coordinated this because they would be in a better position to answer your questions. They, they are the ones that set this up, and they decided why they're having those particular speakers and why those two topics, the topics that are there right now. And I, like, I don't have visibility to when there might be another workshop. I don't even know if they have that as yet. But oh, because I thought, I'm just going by your own words that this was a starting off point. So I was just it wondering. Is, it is, and, and that's what I've been told is that it's a starting point. But I don't know if they have anything already mapped out or if they're doing this one and then they're going to step back. And I, like, I don't know because I'm not part of that planning. That's operational level stuff and it's not part of what trustees would do as governance. So it was that McBain said she would forward my email to Cecil Roach, the coordinating superintendent of education, indigenous education and equity, and to Anita Fishman, principal of equity education. This is the duo evidently responsible for the Say No to Hate seminar. Well, Mr. Roach eventually sent me an email and alas, it doesn't look like any other forms of extremism will be discussed at any future Say No to Hate seminars. 
As to why the white supremacist varietal of extremism will be up for discussion, Mr. Roach states the following, quote, as you may already know, hate crimes in Canada have been increasing and we're at an all-time high in 2017. While we take into account national data, we also have a strong partnership with York Regional Police on whom we rely to provide us with insights on data specific to our region. The York Regional Police has informed us that we have a need in this region to inform youth and their parents about the online recruitment efforts by white supremacists. Our students are targets for this recruitment and we want to be sure that we're doing all we can to inform parents." End quote. But in a subsequent paragraph, Mr. Roach kind of makes my point regarding Islamic extremism and all thanks to a statement he attributes to a Liberal cabinet minister, quote, On December 14, 2018, Minister of Public Safety Ralph Goodale said, Although the majority of recent global attacks can be attributed to individuals inspired by groups such as Daesh and Al-Qaeda, other recent events around the world are bringing attention to threat of violence from individuals who harbor right-wing extremist views, end quote. So there it is in black and white, folks, from a liberal no less. The majority of terrorism in the world today is indeed carried out by Islamists, but for whatever reason, we apparently can't talk about such a thing at a school board seminar, red flagging extremism? Isn't that kind of like having a seminar about NFL dynasties and somehow not making any mention of the New England Patriots? Weird. Yet, so it is that when this extremist alert event takes place on Monday evening in Newmarket, only one type of hatred shall be flagged and it will be flagged not due to the sheer numbers this extremist movement claims, but rather due to the tyranny of political correctness. Besides, as we've been told by the usual suspects on an almost regular basis of late, Islamic terrorism isn't as prevalent as you might think, for Islamist extremism is increasingly being rebranded as mental illness extremism after all, don't want to hurt the feelings of those who adhere to a certain religion of peace. In the meantime, for those taxpayer-funded leftist co-parents, it would appear that when it comes to influencing the minds of our children, these educrats subscribe to the propaganda mantra of get them young and get them forever. And in the process, truth, alas, is the first casualty. For the Rebel.media, I'm David the Menzoid Menzies. Hey folks, the Rebel has a new app. Please download that app and take the Rebel with you wherever you travel.